And once again, in the nice, cozy living room... Mm, we're sitting on the couch. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't like the way you said I moved your body like that. Mm. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the couch in the living room. The dead red herring casting couch. Welcome, everyone. Ah, no, 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 no. Not so funny now, is it? <laughs> Please, get your finger out of my bunghole. No. Thumb out or whatever. <laughs> switch! <laughs> it's called Switch. <laughs> Isn't that dude part of the Valve Creative team or whatever it was? God, I hope not. I think he is. Or was, at least. Oh, Oh, fine. I mean, that, that dude is, uh, I mean, it's not so much his yokes, it's just his no, no, over, overall persona. Yeah, he, he's just kind of disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> we don't need that shit. Nope. We don't need that shit in my life. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> for those who didn't realize it when they tuned in, this is the Dead Red Herring Podcast. Yep, your home for weird conversations and... Insane ramblings. Yep. And uh, my name is Roland. And my name is Magnus. And uh, we are your hosts, obviously. <laughs> uh, we won't be your hosts tonight. We're gonna... <laughs> We're gonna be in you tonight. See, I pulled a sneak on you. <laughs> Snuggle struggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> can, can you do that joke today? Do it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to play fire truck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, red light. <laughs> fire trucks and stuff for red lights. <laughs> But speaking of snuggle struggle, Disney. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. No. Hey, who's doing the segways now, eh? <laughs> it's like a, like a l- broken segway. <laughs> Crashing into a dumpster fire. In Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of Georgia. <laughs> speaking of Georgia. I mean, you told me you were going to do it. Yeah, I, I, I just felt I had to. Because, what was it? Bob Iger, the uh, CEO exec- of Disney. Yeah. Said it will. It will be difficult be... to do shootings and uh, working in Georgia now. Yeah, with the new uh, anti-abortion laws. Was it Georgia or Alabama? Yeah. Jo- Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. Okay, it was one of those two. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, true. But yeah, it is. He said it's going to be uh, difficult. But that really beckons the question: How much fucking is going on that they need abortion that much on the Disney shootings? <laughs> Think about that, people. Yeah. <laughs> is is it a regular occurrence? Oh, like, okay, we're, we're weak in the shooting. Okay, I, I really need to go on. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, not now. And now we can't do this. <laughs> uh, what was it you said uh, they have done shooting Aladdin? Yeah, so, someone pointed out that it was kind of hypocritical because they've just filmed Aladdin in jo- uh, Jordan. Yep. And... Uh, I wouldn't call it as a progressive country, that. <laughs> nope, not really. <laughs> not in the same sense, at least. Nope. But uh, I guess that's none of my business. None of your bees. <sighs> I'm gonna do the same. <laughs> Coffee. It's a live flavor. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of sun and disgusting. <laughs> oh, god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mm. we're gonna have a little bit of a free float on the yeah, topics tonight. Today. Exactly. But speaking about laws and stuff. Yes. Uh, we've been doing a bit of discussion between us uh, about the new... I'm not sure if it's been put into law or if it's just... It's a new bill about uh, loot boxes. I think it's under the voting right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a uh, to prohibit loot boxes in games that are targeted uh, against people under eighteen mm-hmm. or or minors. Yep. Uh, but we have been looking at some uh, commenting on this, and the thought is good. But yeah, there are some. There, there are some uh, points. As some, the, some signs, if you will. <laughs> As the prude person said, there are some kinks I'm concerned with. <laughs> yeah. And 
mostly I have to agree with with the comments that we've seen that it's it's about the language. Yeah. The language used to define this bill. And there's a lot of it in there that is quite ambiguous. It's the way it's framed, uh, you could actually use it against games that isn't just uh, ha- that doesn't just have to do with loot boxes. It could be that uh, if someone finds, for example, violence to be a problem w- in games, they could potentially use the language in this bill to stop a game like that. Yeah, and censor a bit. Yeah, censoring, and it could be that in the end, it uh, it's just not that uh, it's for minors. It could be that they'll deploy it in a way and reframe it that a game that isn't um, suitable for a minor mm. could get blocked the whole way. Yeah. Like, um, imagine certain movies in the 70s and 80s. They were just totally blocked even though they were made for adults. Yeah. Uh, but they were still blocked for the entire public because they were deemed uh, unmoral or, or too violent, too grim, stuff like this. Yeah. So it could, in the end, if things go bad, that is. Uh, kind of a cynical viewing on this, maybe, but but <laughs> I think we need to stay vigilant. Um in the end, a bill like this could be a bigger problem than it could be a help in combating things like loot boxes. Yeah. Because I do agree that loot boxes are a big problem. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, <clears throat> un- I- I'm not going to say unregulated, but in a way it's kind of un- unregulated in games. It's-, it's free to do what so pleases to exploit. Yeah. And, I mean, I wish that the gaming industry and the gaming market could be self-regulating. Yeah. But it seems that that's not really possible today for several reasons. One of them being that kids don't really have the afterthought. They're not critical thinkers Ah, in that sense. It's they only see like a cool skin or or whatever in Fortnite or they don't have the sense of consequence that uh, yeah exactly a lot of grown ups have yeah they they don't see the full potential of their mm. wants of their actions <laughs> consequences <laughs> your actions are consequences yeah and so and so on and but... there's certain things that I think of off the top of my head that I really think is a real problem, and that is uh, within the definitions of games that, or, or criterias for uh, the handling is that a game that is uh, intended for minors, but it could also be one of these points where uh, contains a character within the game that is a minor. Yeah, And in that case, it could be like you have a game. It's made for adult in all ways uh, attend. Yep. Uh, in all shapes and forms. Yeah. Uh, but there are one or more characters that are minors. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could lead to this game being blocked. Yeah. And uh, th- there's, if I get it. If I remember correctly, there's supposed to be some kind of fine involved in games that are, uh, so to say, marketed to minors, but have content that is not suitable for minors, Mm. according to the bill. Mm. So you have this game, it's intended for adults, but by the definitions of the bill, you have a character that is a minor, and thus... uh, legislation looks at the game as being intended for minors. Yeah. And in by that way, the publisher or maker could get fined, even though it never was intended for minors. Mm. Which leads to either the publisher or the um, development studio just not 
finishing the project or or going out of business because well they get a fine and they have to pay it and they don't get any profit for the game they made. Mm. So there are still problems yep. in this. And if I understand things correctly, some of the people that's been part of writing this bill uh, are people that believe that video games causes violence. And that doesn't really surprise no. me because it is a <sighs> loud thumping drum yeah. with, with these people that at least if I'm going to be like that with with the conservatives and the pro- progressives yeah exactly they, in mean, their own little politicians special, <laughs> politicians yeah they are still under the impression that video games causes violence which or sexism or sexism and racism mm. and all the isms n- nasty wasties in the world the dark forces in the world socialism <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, yeah, that, that is. It is only. F- I can say fair, but it is only. Okay, no, I'm gonna say fair that these people will sort of uh, hook on on the this legislations mm-hmm. if they can do anything to, yeah, yeah, to regulate. push their ideas and ag- agendas. Yeah, regulate it. Yeah. Uh, so it it doesn't surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I mean. I will be criticizing President Trump right now. Do you mean Orange Man is really bad? No, Orange Man... Not the Orange Man bad, but the, I have real critique. I have... <laughs> <laughs> because Donald Trump believes that video games causes violence. Yeah. And he's wrong. Yeah. So, I think it could be a problem if he gets some weird idea to go after video games or yeah. video gaming entertainment because <clears throat> i mean say whatever you will about trump but he is sort of a bull in a china shop yeah but he's determined he, he's determined, determined bull to do, yeah in china exactly. shop. <laughs> but he rushes in he doesn't think of it seems like he doesn't think about consequences, whether you do or not, I, I can't say. I'm still thinking he plays four-dimensional chess. Really. <laughs> it's more fun to think that yeah. way, I guess. But, I mean, if he gets the idea that uh, video games should be censored, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually takes the step to do something about it. Yeah. Because... He has sort of the tendencies that if he believes something, he will go for it no matter what. Yeah. So, I just hope that that doesn't happen. Uh, but Trump has made another problem for gamers. I mean, it, it's not really as much problems for us. Nah. I mean, we're up here in the north of Europe. <laughs> Good old Scandinavia. In the middle of fuck all, we have our own problems. Yeah, exactly. But but for our American friends, yes, it is kind of a problem with the uh, new tariffs. Yeah, and the trade conflict with China. Trade war. <laughs> because with the tariffs, uh, when they go up, on uh, I, I'm not sure about how on the the number of products. Uh, covered by the tariffs now, but mm. but it's a whole lot of them, and among them, if I remember correctly, are uh, video game consoles. Yeah, because video game consoles made in China will be uh, hit by the tariffs, mm-hmm. which means that they will be more expensive for people in the U.S. to buy. Yeah, and it might even be as bad as um, physical copies of games might be hit by the tariffs. So. The price of games, physical copies at least, might go up. Yeah. So I'm not sure if if it's going to be that much of a cost increase, but I mean, it's still 25% on the import. That could be a lot in the long run, yeah. Yeah. So that that is kind of BS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we are not under the impression that everything the orange man does is bad. No. But- but in these cases... Uh, I mean, it's valid critique. Yeah. Valid it's critique. just not because. I mean, he's a politician, and politicians are, by the uh, most part, bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, 
I mean, praise the things that are good, critique the things that are bad. And then we should be in the clear. Yeah. Just be honest. I, I have a harrowing feeling that uh, the politicians in our country might adopt the same. That is also, that might actually be a problem for us, because if the U.S. goes on an offense against immoral games, yeah, uh, the weirdo politicians we have here in Sweden might actually jump on the bandwagon and say, that oh, we need to protect the people because they can think for themselves. But then again, then they would they would be supporting something Trump supported, and you can't have that. <laughs> you know the meme, you got two buttons and the guy just he dries his forehead. <laughs> Do <laughs> support what Trump supported. Protect the children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much actually. But uh, besides the happenings in the US, yeah. the World Health Organization oh dear, yeah. has deemed <laughs> They've actually classified gaming addiction as a serious illness. Yeah, I might be uh, addicted to to play games sometimes, so yeah. Give me welfare! Give me... Give me... <laughs> sickness welfare, yeah. It's, it's actually really interesting, because... I, I won't deny that there aren't any problems within gaming and gaming addiction. Real addiction here. But it's not as much... Really, the the gaming by itself, the or the games, nah, it, it's well, it's like everything else. It's the dopamine rush. Yeah, it's the things within the game yeah. that does. I mean, games are designed specifically to trigger our reward centers. Yeah, so I'm not surprised that there are people with certain. Uh, personality traits or, or genetics that will be more weak-minded individuals. <laughs> you you could say that. An unfair point of view, but yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> heart swallows heart swallows. Heart pills to swallow. Heart swallows. Heart swallows no, to heart pill. swallow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a hard pill to swallow that yeah. actually there are people that have problems. Yes. And... I mean, if you look at these nocturnal beings that uh, at least, well, as much as nowadays, but as much back in the days, just sat for at least 20 hours playing World of Warcraft. Nocturnal beings, nocturnal you Nocturnal beings. <laughs> Rug Ugla. Rug, Rug Ugla, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You just open the door and the eyes just reflecting. <laughs> that is my favorite. Look how calm she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's like... Play Minecraft! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you haven't seen them for a week and then you go looking for them. And they are sitting in there like some kind of weird twisted monster. <sighs> Mother! <laughs> Big Mac! <laughs> You roll up the curtains, sunlights hit them, and it burn them to a pile of ash. Just evaporates in a puff of ash. <laughs> 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 we all know that kind. We, we, at least, I mean, everyone knows at least one person that were or is like that. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, in the... Uh... <laughs> one in three is a weird person. I'm not a weird person. Me neither. Bum bum. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> actually. Shit. Shit. <laughs> but so. that, uh, with the World Health Organization and their new addition of gaming addiction, that might actually be a bigger problem here. Yeah. Because our government is like... <sighs> Whatever the World Health Organization, organization says, they take as... Uh, it's like a fat kid on cake. It, yeah. They just can't help themselves. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say they take it as gospel, but... Um, well, yeah. Fat, fat kid with cake works. You know, socialists uh, with rich people's money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, especially we, when we have the... Uh, Should it actually be socialism with the means of production? Rich people's money means of production. What's the difference, really? <laughs> Yeah, both are getting seized. Exactly. 
the means of reproduction. That too. Yes. <laughs> but since we have the um, social helsan, or the oh, what the fuck is it called? Folkhälsan. Folkhälsan. Uh, uh, in direct tra- translation, yeah. it's the people's health. Yeah. It, and uh, if that doesn't sound socialist, then I don't know what. <laughs> the people's health. I, I mean, when you describe it, it's a governmental institution that yeah. uh, works with the health of the... Uh, it, it's the still state-run healthcare, yeah, more or less. Exactly. And they do pump out these... Almost retarded statements sometimes when the... <laughs> almost? Almost, yeah. Well, sometimes they are retarded. I'm giving them the, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Don't. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> so I, am, I will not be surprised if they actually adopt these views from the World Health Organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the thing is that it, when it comes to this game addiction, uh, as far as I know, it's not in the ICD the International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems. Uh, and current version is ICD-10. It's not part of that. Uh, yet. Yet. But uh, who knows? It might be. Yeah. And when it, at the point where it actually gets into that, I actually think that there will, there will be people that are going to try and actually get... Welfare yeah. for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hmm. I might try that myself. <laughs> but but at this point in time... Uh, Maybe they, they will just send me to rehab or something. <laughs> <laughs> to be classified as being a gaming addict, uh, um, your gaming has to uh, be a problem. Uh, yeah. It'll have to have gone on for over a year, and it uh, it causes problems with, for you to uh, get out and uh, do other stuff, g- keep routines and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I guess we'll have to see, but <laughs> yeah. But do I think that it's actually a good thing that it's on the World Health Organization's list? I'm not so sure. Because re- we we already have game addiction, yeah. But to have gaming, as in video games and such, as mm-hmm. a diagnosis, I'm not really sure that that is actually. I just think that's spiteful, really. Yeah, it's not really spiteful. It's just kind of lazy because it's that's not true. the game in, in themselves that's the problem. It's the. <sighs> It's the personal traits that is the problem. Yeah, exactly. And that is basically as in every other narcotics uh, addiction and all that. Nar- narcotics? Uh, Booze. Yeah. That is narcotics. That, that, that is an, a narcotics. Gambling. Gambling. Uh, Sex. Well, what's it called? Behavioral addictions. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be that you you cannot go down the street without jumping on certain tiles and stuff. Mm. Now, that would be classified as uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Yep. So, I mean, we still, still, we already have classifications and definitions for such problems. Mm. Now, adding gaming into that mix... It's kind of a loose explanation. Yeah, it's too vague, maybe. Yeah. And I think that it's it it doesn't really go to the roots of the problem. It's more like just putting a name on a symptom more. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's saying that, like, you're a drug addict, uh, but instead of calling you a drug addict, they say that you're a, a heroin addict. I mean, you, yeah. you, you can say that you're a heroin addict, but in the end, it's your substance. You have a substance addiction. Yeah. So it's not as much... Uh, well, specifically, heroin might actually be a bad example because that is what you you are addicted to. It's like you are addicted to the thrill of gambling or the booze or food jump- or-, or food, jumping tiles, yeah, smacking cats. I mean, whatever. 
Punch <laughs> I have a punching addiction. I need to punch kittens. I have a punching addiction. What? Ow! <laughs> Good God. I, I just don't hope there are people that have a punching kitty addiction. <laughs> because in that case, treatment might involve lead. Yeah. In small but efficient doses. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the applicator. <laughs> That, that is that is a nice little, little sketch from Hitchcock, actually. Yeah, yes, it is. I, I have discovered a new cure for insomnia. And this is the medicine. Uh, this is the medicine cartridge. It's a bullet. Yeah. And this is the applicator. A gun. A gun. <laughs> Applied directly to the head. <laughs> and inject. I mean, it's so macabre, but so entertaining. Yeah. And the reason it's funny is because it's just so absurd. Yep. Can't say that. No, 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 no. Someone might take it serious and... Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. (laughs) In the name of the Senate. Yeah. Yep. Good So, yeah, that... Then the, then it really beckons the question. These new laws for loot boxes and regis- legislations for games and tariffs and all that, mm-hmm. and in the same time, they classify as gaming as an addiction or a disease, really. Yeah. Would that be a attack on sick people? It would technically be. But then again, it could be classified like the war on drugs, really. Which is a losing battle, but... Exactly, but still. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of fun when you ha- almost have to take out your brain and use it as a Rubik's Cube to do the mental gymnastics for this, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, in a sense, maybe you could say it's an attack on sick people, but I, 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 I would, don't really see it as I, I w- that. No, no, it's not... I wouldn't say it's an active attack, but... If we're going to have to legislate that, and we're going to classify that, then it might as well. I'm just saying that as, all right, you two, bye. (laughs) (laughs) Who wins? Who wins? Who died? (laughs) I'm I'm not saying it. I just like to using their own little things against them. Yeah, yeah. I I see where you're going. (laughs) Yeah. You know, stir up the anthill and all that. Yeah. And... But in the end, I mean, if it all comes down to what happens to gaming, at the moment, I think we have bigger problems when it comes to the gaming world. They're not new problems. They're old problems, but they are getting more intense. Like Fake autists. No, wait, sorry. <laughs> that too. Now, I'm actually thinking about what's happening to the major companies. Yeah. Uh, like Activision, they've lost... Well, not lost. They laid off a lot of people. Uh, Blizzard. Uh, who else? I'm not sure if there are anyone else that laid off people. But I mean, the big companies are going down. Yeah. How does the stocks for these companies? I haven't up? checked it. But I, I am gonna check now. Actually, wow, <laughs> this is some live feed. But people. I mean, we've been talking about this earlier, and from the looks of it. The uh, predictions, quote unquote, at least that I were talking about, that uh, the major, major companies, the publishers and developers, that they were going to have a hard time and they might actually go under. It kind of looks like they're heading that way right now. Like they're in the middle of the downhill, well, (laughs) downhill run. (laughs) Down, yeah, down the rocky road. It seems like it's been going... I'm I'm looking at Blizzard. It had a spike on it last Tuesday, but it's steadily going up, then da- uh, down, then up, then down. But yeah, it's, it, it looks the like usual. It's going, yeah, the usual. I, if, but it's going quite Yeah, down. but I don't, I don't really think that looking at the nah, stock just, market <laughs> actually gives the full picture. It nah. might give an idea. Actually, the stock market reacts more uh, after certain events mm. rather than beforehand. Because if, if it was true. reacting beforehand, it would mean that there's some kind of inside trading going <laughs> on. Oy. So, but 
And we wouldn't want to insinuate that, would we? <laughs> no. But I heard some someone talking about this that uh I wonder if it was Chim Pool. Okay, I, I'm I'm not sure who said it, but someone were talking about how uh one of these companies that their stock plummeted after some announcement made that uh, things weren't going ac- really according to plan or something like that. Jesus. And that that is actually the real deal when it comes to the, the uh, stock market, that all the investors, they're waiting for news and happenings around their companies mm. or the companies that they've invested in. And if it looks like there will be a loss or uh, something bad, they will withdraw from that investment. Yeah. They, they will sell their stock, withdraw their money, and go somewhere else. Which means that the, uh, the company will, uh, their stocks will be worth less, and that means that they have less, uh, what's it called? Equity? Sure, it's called that. Well, uh, the the cash mm. flow goes down and shit happens. Yeah. So, I mean, meh. Meh. And that's, I'm still believe, I still believe that the way forward, the future belongs with the small developers, the small publishers, indie companies, and smaller studios. Yeah, exactly. That it might be this that, uh, the smaller ones get more, get more publicity, and they get buy more. They grow, and then see what happens to them. Yeah, and then the smaller ones. So I, I believe it goes in waves. But uh, absolutely, absolutely I, the, uh, the smaller ones really have the future in their hands. Yeah, but because really, but, uh, a lot of the smaller ones understand that they're still close enough to the gamers that they know what gamers want and expect. They want addiction. No, wait, sorry. <laughs> exactly. And so, I mean, when it comes to things like loot boxes and such, yeah, you can always expect the big publishers to have loot boxes yeah, and pay-to-win system. But they do appear to the gray mass of gamers also. Yeah. So, uh... But when it comes to the smaller people, they, they know what people, like at least like us, want. Mm-hmm. The, the gamers that don't want the loot boxes and stuff like that. And they adhere to that, and they give us products that don't have such things. Mm. And I believe that we as gamers should encourage this by actually playing, buying, reviewing, and streaming their games. Yeah. Expose them to the bigger audience yeah. and make sure that people understand that these guys develop things uh, uh, to our wishes. Yeah. They uh, re- respect our critique and, and our so to say wants when it comes to gaming yeah and thus we should reward them for that but in the meantime they also follow their own little vision of course more than the uh, gaming companies does also yeah th- so th- that, are, that is also a nice touch yeah they, they still have the creative spirit <laughs> spirit <laughs> what are though <laughs> chance of doing do exactly so yeah and then we have the Epic Game Store that just fucks things up. Our new addition to the dead horses in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, their summer sale, Yikes. or whatever you, they call it, it's been so horrendously failing. <laughs> I mean, if you have a platform where you are meant to sell games, you do not ban or block people for buying multiple games in a short period, especially when you don't have a shopping cart. I mean, that would be considered a bad marketing in uh, a sane world, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we live in a clown world. Honk honk. Yeah. <laughs> At least it feels like it. <laughs> <sighs> honk honk, motherfucker. Yeah. But yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that might be considered a bad move. It might be considered a dick move. <laughs> Bird culture, that is considered a <laughs> dick move. <laughs> yeah. So, I do actually agree that the 
the advent of the Epic Game Store has been mm-hmm. sort of a good thing for the marketplace of yeah. games because Steam does still need a bigger uh, yeah. opponent or, or competition. Exactly. I, I... It's just that the Epic Game Store has... They got the ball, they fumbled, they they dropped it all, they fell over, and now they blame everyone else. Yeah. <clears throat> like as, uh, I was going to say, I, as much as I hate the monopoly on the, ge- on the game stores online, mm. I don't see that the competition is competition is much better right now. The thing is Until that... Until they shape up, or Steam shape up, then yes, we're gonna have this monopoly. And like you said, Epic Games tried, they failed, they failed miserably, mm. and I don't see how they can get up from this. Maybe no. they can, maybe... But... I mean... They, their name will still will be tainted. If it hadn't been for them not really having a good uh, roadmap on developing their platform, if they have ac- had actually put in the work and had a at least minimally completed mm. platform, they having shopping carts and stuff like that, I mean, having just that mm. would have been a big difference. Yeah. But instead, they've actually just gone gung-ho on getting the exclusive deals. Yeah. And that has just pissed people off. Yeah, I I also get the feeling that they are so spiteful in all this, because instead of their going in with the mindset that that, um, oh, we're just here as a alternative to those who don't want to use Steam and all that, and Mm -hmm. we're just happy to hear they're just so, well... We're the alternative to Steam, and you will like it. Yeah, all that. It's just such a a toxic mindset, but <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, a toxic mindset in that they that they are so full of themselves, be, knowing they are the only competition to Steam. It's like the bitch queen in high school. Yeah, thinking she's the best and most beautiful, and everyone should love her. Yeah, just because. And, and when the- she finds out that nobody actually likes her, she goes on a fit. <laughs> A tantrum. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm. To be honest, it's it's not that Steam has a monopoly. They don't. There are a lot of other places where you can actually get the games. Of course. It's just that Steam is the biggest. Yeah. And to be honest, they are the best when it comes to availability and. Uh, they are very the community, very versatile. Yeah, in the, in the and, and when I say community, it's like what I mean is that you go and look at the game, and you get reviews there. You can see whatever people were thinking. Yeah, was it good? Was it bad? Is it mixed? I mean, you get a good review there right at that point. Yeah, and I. When it comes to reviews like that, I mean, users writing directly, uh, I think there are, there's more credibility in that than going to a game website yeah. <laughs> that you, like uh, the usual suspects. I mean, what do you first look at when you go into a Steam page and see a game that you want to buy? Do you go to look at the user reviews or just fox off to... IGN and yeah. takes a look there. Yeah, I always the... scroll down, look at the reviews. Yeah, more. because when you go into IGN's page, you're like, oh, it looks like you're using adblock. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Well, are I... you? I am because I am <laughs> scum and I turn out them pesky adblocks. <laughs> no, <laughs> ain't gonna happen, sister. <laughs> ain't happening, chief. Exactly. But yeah, you go down to look at the reviews, seeing. Yeah. Okay, it's mostly negative. What's that all about? Mm-hmm. Go down, see, most recently, mostly negative. Okay, what happened? All yeah. right. Yeah. The latest update, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. The most positive, seeing it's mixed. You get to see the good reviews, the bad reviews, the most helpful reviews. Yeah. It is a very good user review system. Yeah. I mean, sh- I, I want to say that there are good gaming sites out there. You got Niche Gamer, 
Tech Raptor uh, exclusively games. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just so much easier to get the the direct experience from gamers. Of course. Then and there, when you look at the game. And you get the uh, <clears throat> the, the user user experience, so yeah. the everyman experience, if you want a little bit more, I'm saying quote-unquote here, professional. Then I go to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. <laughs> but yeah, you, you can go to a, a real... A game respectable ju- A respectable site. games journalist site to get a little more quote-unquote professional review. But yeah, the, the, you, there's you something get, really cringy to say professional games journalist. <laughs> I get a bile sense in my mouth yeah. and just saying professional and ga- game journalist. I, I It doesn't mix really well. No, it, it's a profession that's been ruined. Yeah. Totally. 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 Oh my god, totes the door. Totes. Uh, totes. Totes my goats. <laughs> totes my goat. Toast my goat. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, Croker. <laughs> yeah. You think we can cover it all? I I think there are you can always add more. Of course. But yeah, I, I think I the think ta- we had the main points at least. So yeah, I mean, for the time being, yeah, for the time being, I think we've actually gone as far as. But now I'm curious that what the listeners think. Yes, do you? What's your take on all of this? Are you going to go for the welfare money when it comes to gaming addiction? <laughs> <laughs> Join me, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> what about the sisters? Fuck them! No. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sarge, I stepped on a mine. <laughs> what do I do? You die. <laughs> it's like that quote in Black Getter. If we were to step on a mine, what, what will I do? Well, George, the standard procedure will be stand completely still, jump 500 feet up in the air, and sketch yourself over a small area. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what you did. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of mines, that is actually just a weird Hollywood trope that you can step on a mine and... Kaboom. Y- no, that it nope. doesn't blow up if you just stand there. It is directly triggered. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not that it waits until it's decompressed. Because when you step on a mine, what you do is you actually activate the uh, mechanism to activate or light oh, the, the fuse. the combustion just yeah. goes there. Oh, cool. So, I mean, w- at the moment you step on it, you ignite it, and then it goes kabloom. Good to know. Yeah. So, remember that, kids. <laughs> if you step on a mine, no matter what you do, you will blow. <laughs> Fuck, basically. <laughs> it's, yeah. Totally. <laughs> Totes. Totes. <laughs> now. Uh, at least as far as I know, there aren't any mines that use a system that uh, waits for a decompression. Click clock. Yeah. Yeah. So. We need to invent that one. No, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it, would, <laughs> it would be kind of unnecessary, really. I mean, if uh, a, a regular... Um, yeah, soldier's mine. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not, a troop I, mine? Yeah, troop mine, exactly. Trump, Nina. Yeah. I mean, if it would, if it would have this um, decompression trigger, it would basically more or less singe <laughs> the backside. I mean, you would still die. Well, but it would you be would more... get seriously hurt uh, yeah. at the least. But the most damage would be at the backside. Yeah. And it's not really the explosion, it's the shockwave that kills. You're not wrong. <laughs> and also shrapnel. Yeah. <laughs> Tra- tra- trap. Shrapnel. Shrapnel. Can and will kill. Yeah. Unless you put a electromagnet in your heart or whatever. No. Yes. You'll die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I will become the next Iron Man. <laughs> Post snap Iron Man. <laughs> I'll snap. The second snap. Yes. Is that a spoiler? 
if we keep it at this, it won't be. Snap kills Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're scum. <laughs> scum. Scum. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, fortunately, we have seen it. You haven't seen it, but... No, but I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I just feel that with oh, all the memes, coming up. all the memes and shit out right now showing the scene where Tony Stark snaps his finger and well it, it's not a, a secret anymore nah nah i mean it, it has been out for a month yeah yeah it's been a month so and to be honest i'm not the kind of person that really cares about spoilers no, I, I'm, because I'm, you I'm lack the... variety in life. You <laughs> just want the the plot served on a plate. You don't want the uh, excitement or the surprise. Nah. Oh. No wonder he's cynical. <laughs> High school ruined movies for me, okay? <laughs> I studied film uh, in school and learned to analyze and look at movies in a way that more or less, takes away the magic. So, yeah. What if I were to knock you on the head pretty hard? Would that help? It would hurt, but it wouldn't help. What if I do it two times? (laughs) Well, if you do hard enough, you might knock me out. Still won't help. (laughs) God damn it, we shall try. (laughs) Then we'll do it three times! (laughs) You can help. (laughs) By rehabilitating. (laughs) Magnus rehabilitation tips. Knock someone over the head three times. You take a hammer, and depending on what you want to rehabilitate, (laughs) you knock it a specific time on the head. If it's a light addiction, one tap. Heavy addiction, five taps. (laughs) Just give or take (laughs) in between that. What about uh, ideologies? Might need the heavy duty applier. <laughs> sledgehammer. <laughs> A super sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> Where's his head go? <laughs> Compressed. <laughs> Scattered itself all over, over the area. Over a small area. <laughs> yeah. Well, since we're into talking about knocking heads. <laughs> I think it's time to go. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Uh, so, yeah. Do tell us, what do you think about uh, the bill against uh, loot boxes? The uh, classification of game gaming addiction by the World Health Organization? The Epic Games debacle. The Epic Games debacle. The thing with the major game companies going down. But don't really tell what you think about the Georgia and the Disney. <laughs> That's that was just bad jokes. Yeah, I, I thought it was a little fun tidbit. It's it's facetious. That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> dark humor. Exactly. So yeah, but you can always uh, tell us in the comments on YouTube uh, if this when this is on YouTube. Yep. And uh, otherwise, you can always get in touch with us on Twitter. Yep. The handle is at DRH Podcast. You can send us a mail. The mail is dead.red.herring at uh, gmail.com. And you find our stuff on uh, most places you find podcasts. Yep. So. And we do streams from time to time, so. Yeah, so check it. Check our. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. No, wait. Check our, um, both our YouTube channel for that and our Twitch. Yep. Channel. Just search uh, Dead Red Herring on Twitch and you should find us. Yeah. Uploading from time to time. Time to time. Time to time. Doing stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you had a great time and uh, we'll talk to you again later. Yeah. Have a nice one, people. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. We have such noises to show you. (laughs)